The paint is scraped with a spatula in a superposition of colors mixing blacks with different textures. No doubt this is the work of the French painter Pierre Soulage. But this piece, like others of the same period, contains an enigma. Why does the paint come off in some areas, while others it becomes soft and sticky, eventually dripping? To analyze three paintings, Les Abattoirs Musée Frac Occitane Toulouse has opened its doors to a team of scientists. For three days, accompanied by the staff of this contemporary art museum in Toulouse, they will try to unravel this mystery. We find the same deteriorations in Soulages' paintings as in the paintings of other artists, such as de Kooning, Appel, but also Riopel and John Mitchell, who worked in Paris during the same period and used the same suppliers. The deteriorations, which are very similar, are linked to the behavior of the materials used in Paris in the 1950s and 1960s. Pauline Helou de la Grandière has been an art restorer for 17 years and has written a dissertation in order to understand these recurring deteriorations. A specialist in the works of Pierre Soulage, she has restored over a hundred paintings. This piece was made during a period when the artist was producing almost one painting every day. These were the years when he was the most productive, and his works are very important today for the history of art because they contributed to the spread of abstract art, particularly French abstract art, and also to the history of Soulage's works because it was a time when he reached a level of notoriety and international recognition that was quite significant. This research makes it possible to observe the painting in a different light. Thanks to imaging instruments, the scientists can decipher many of its aspects. Here, a tool that uses lights with different inclinations enables them to observe the texture of the paint. They can also study its brightness with this prototype which combines an astronomical camera and a mobile LED. Sheen is a phenomenon that is difficult to quantify and is more easily seen with the naked eye than with instruments. And yet here, the sheen is visible. This is a prototype of an instrument that does not yet exist and that will be used to try to quantify the sheen on a whole surface of the painting. What the camera will see are the points that reflect light when they are illuminated at the very moment when the LED passes over them, making it possible to detect those that are more or less bright and thus the level of shine. Pauline has deliberately left part of the painting unrestored. The team can therefore analyze the images before and after her restoration. On this painting, she must reattach the flaking paint. But what she is particularly interested in are these unusual drips that were not intended by the artist. Rather than oxidizing and being more and more brittle, the paint becomes softer and softer, and sometimes even liquid. It happens that some of the binding agents in the paint, which is actually oil, drips from the impastus. And yet initially the paintings were totally dry. There was nothing wrong with the drying. This is rather an aging problem resulting in the paint becoming fluid again and dripping from the impastus. To understand the chemical composition of the work, the team uses luminescence a non-invasive imaging technique. Mathieu Torri, a CNRS engineer, illuminates the painting with different wavelengths, from ultraviolet to almost infrared, and observes the reaction of the materials. He is particularly interested in the differences in the chemical states of the binder in the bright and matte areas. We study the way in which the pigments or the binders that make up the layers of paint absorb the light and look at how they re-emit this light in luminescence. We then compile all these images to try to elucidate the properties of luminescence and absorption of the binder or pigment. This luminescence imaging technique will enable us to find out more about the chemical state of this more liquid area, which has led to the dripping that is not part of the original composition of the work. And even when the efflorescence, a degradation product on the surface of the pictures, is removed, 
This phenomenon can be visualized by luminescence imaging. In the images, the difference between the restored and unrestored parts can be seen very clearly. There is a line here which marks the boundary between the area that has been cleaned by Pauline and the part that has not yet been touched. We can see a difference in luminescence because, apparently, Pauline's cleaning has modified the chemical state on the surface and the efflorescence that she had observed. This luminescence reflects this slight chemical modification of the surface, but it's a good way to identify the restored areas. The imaging campaign continues, not only on this painting, but also on other works by André Marfon or Georges Mathieu. One of the most important clues may lie in the conservation conditions of the works. These new imaging techniques will help to follow the evolution of the visual appearance and chemical state of the paintings over time in order to adapt the conservation protocols whenever necessary and make sure that these works remain faithful to each brushstroke by the artist.